In this lecture we're going to be looking at standing waves. We'll look at how the boundary conditions are important for determining when standing waves are going to occur. You need to complete this lecture before attending the standing waves on the string laboratory exercise. This lecture covers section 16.7 of your textbook. Last lecture we showed that the speed of a wave on the string is given by the square root of the tension divided by the mass per unit length. After that we showed that the power transmitted by a wave travelling through a string is given by the power is equal to a half mu, which is the mass per unit length, times v, the wave speed, times omega squared, times the amplitude squared. We saw that waves could be reflected. When a wave is reflected from a fixed end, then it undergoes an inversion, which we call a phase change of pi radians. If it's reflected from an end which is free to move, or a less dense medium, then it does not undergo a phase change, and there's no inversion. We saw that waves can be transmitted at a boundary between two strings, and often some of the wave is transmitted and some is reflected. And then we saw the very important principle of superposition, which stated that if two or more waves are moving through the same medium, the resultant value of the wave function is the algebraic sum of the wave functions of the original waves. And we saw that this can lead to constructive interference, destructive interference, or something in between. And we showed that for two sinusoidal waves offset by a phase difference phi, when we added them together, we got this equation to a sine kx minus omega t plus phi on 2 cos phi on 2, which has the same form as the wave equation, it's just that the amplitude has now been modified. We also use the equation, the path difference over lambda times 2 pi is equal to the phase difference, to solve problems. This equation can only be used if the two waves have the same initial phase difference and also they have the same frequency and wavelength. If, if they don't, then you'll need to modify this equation. Okay, on to new material. We're going to be looking at standing waves now. Standing waves are generated when we have two identical waves moving in opposite directions. So here we've got a wave moving up and here we have a wave moving down. So the difference between their wave equations is the sign here to show that they're traveling in opposite directions. So to work out the resultant wave, we need to add together these two waves. So when we do that, we can use this equation for adding sine functions. Sine A plus sine B is equal to two sine A plus B on two, cos A minus B on two. Okay, so we've got the two A, Adding these two together, we get 2kx on 2, which is the kx, and subtracting this from this, we end up with minus 2 omega t on 2, so minus omega t. We can leave out the minus because it's inside a cos function, so it doesn't make a difference if it's there or not. So this is the equation for a standing wave. So here's this equation again. This equation describes an oscillation pattern with a stationary outline that results from the superposition of two identical waves travelling in opposite directions. Okay, at any single point x along the piece of string or in the material, this part of the term is fixed. Then as time progresses, this part oscillates between minus 1 and 1. So each element of string has its own amplitude given by 2a sine kx, which is what's giving us this envelope or this stationary outline. So note that the wave function can be split into a spatial here and a temporal here part. It does not contain the function of kx minus omega t, so it's not a traveling wave. Okay, what I have here is a standing wave, which is generated by a frequency generator here, which is just moving up and down with simple harmonic motion. You do need to know the names of some parts of a standing wave. These bits where the string is stationary are known as nodes. They're the places where the amplitude of the motion is zero. The places with the largest movement are known as the antinodes and they occur halfway between the nodes. 
At each piece of the string, the string itself is moving with simple harmonic motion and the amplitude of that motion is given by 2a sine kx. So that depends on how far from the end of the string the piece of string that we're considering is. So this slide just is saying the same thing, simple harmonic motion. The particles make up the string or medium undergo simple harmonic motion. The amplitude is given by 2a sine kx, a function of x. So it depends where on the string they are, what their amplitude is going to be. You should try homework set 6, question 3. Okay, so some definitions. We saw on the diagram that nodes were the points on the standing wave with zero amplitude. So those points are where 2a sine kx is equal to zero. Okay, so necessarily kx is equal to zero pi, two pi, three pi. We can write that as n pi. And k is equal to two pi on lambda. So we have kx is equal to n pi, where n is any integer and k is equal to 2 pi over lambda, which tells us x, the positions of the nodes, is equal to m pi on k, which is m pi over 2 pi lambda, which is equal to n times lambda over 2. So the nodes occur half a wavelength apart at 0, zero, lambda over two, two lambda over two, which is just lambda, three lambda over two, two lambda, etc. Now, antinodes are the points with the maximum amplitude. So for the maximum amplitude, sine kx had to be equal to plus or minus one, which tells us that kx must be pi on two, that's 90 degrees, three pi on two, five pi on two, seven pi on two, etc. And so solving this in exactly the same way as before, we get x is equal to lambda on 4, 3 lambda on 4, 5 lambda on 4, 7 lambda on 4, etc. So this has the general form n lambda on 4, where n is every second or the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc. Now we'd expect these antinodes to be halfway between the nodes, and they are. The first node was at 0, the second node was at lambda on 2, and lambda on 4 is exactly halfway between those two nodes. Okay, so a question. Two waves travelling in opposite directions produce a standing wave. The individual wave functions are y1 is equal to 4 sine 3x minus 2t and y2 is 4 sine 3x plus 2t, where x and y are measured in centimetres and t is in seconds. Part A asks us to find the amplitude of the simple harmonic motion of the element of the medium located at x is equal to 2.3 centimetres and part B says find the position of the nodes and antinodes if one of the end of the string is at x equals 0. Okay, so we can see straight away that this is going to give a standing wave as these two waves are identical apart from the direction in which they're travelling. These signs are opposite. Okay, so let's solve it. 